welcome to the show. It's Amsterdam, man. Eh? No, for I, I didn't take anything. This is family friendly. I'm a little tired because I, I went to Paris, Brussels, and Amsterdam. It was. Uh, the buildings were. <coughs> Sorry for all the. Relaxing. Hi, I got a welcome to 3 Minute John. <coughs> and now, the news. Voila. Apple is safer than Android because. Facebook. We talked last week about how Facebook doesn't give a crap about your privacy by letting Cambridge Analytica collect all your data and use it to manipulate you and all the friends in your list. After the whole scandal, people started downloading all the information Facebook has been keeping on them by going to settings and then clicking on download a copy of your data. And many were shocked to find out that Facebook was keeping logs of their calls, text, including names, phone numbers, and the length of each call made or received. <sighs> Oh, you little blue son of a b The thing is that this happened only to Android users. Apparently, iPhones never allowed this to happen in the first place. <laughs> More recent versions of Android should prevent this kind of data collection, but still. What the f Android? <laughs> Just to be clear, Facebook knows everything about you. But hey. It's free, right? It's a known fact that the company makes money by selling your data to advertisers or political manipulators. And not just your age, sex and interests. Sometimes it sells everything there is to know about you. And that, my friends, is the cost of a free app. Is it worth it? Leave a comment and let me know. Oh, and another thing. Zuckerberg will testify in Congress for the Cambridge Analytica inquiry. Oh, hi, Mark. I'm pretty sure he won't do jail time for this because, well... 62 billion dollars, but I really hope this teaches him a lesson about the importance of privacy. <laughs> you are no match for my style. Samsung Galaxy S9 problems. <laughs> Even though the S9 and the S9 Plus were just released, a number of users have reported that they're experiencing touchscreen issues with their phone. <laughs> the screens in question appear to have dead zones where they basically don't accept your touch. We don't know how many headsets are affected by this dead zone problem, but let's face it. Compared to the Note 7 issues, a few dead zones are like a mild springtime breeze. <sighs> and that zone sounds like a title for a B-movie. John was scrolling through the photos of that girl he likes, when all of a sudden he wanted to give a like on a photo that revealed a little cleavage. But instead of a like, he tapped on the dead zone. Dead zone. Now in a theater nowhere near you. Don't give like. <laughs> Samsung released a statement in which they ask any customer that has this issue to reach out to them in order to get this problem fixed. I won't try to defend Samsung, but Apple also had their mishaps with new phones. They still do. And that's why I think smartphone manufacturers should make a new phone once every two years. Because then they will have enough time to develop a truly brilliant phone without bugs and glitches. And doing so, they will save their reputation, they will save the planet, and let's not forget, they will save our wallets. Oh my god, I'm so smart, I could kiss myself. Huawei P20 Pro. Wow. Forget about the S9. We have a new smartphone king. Or do we? Huawei unveiled this week the new P20 and P20 Pro. We're gonna talk about the Pro because it's better, faster. First of all, let's get the obvious out of the way. It's hard to get past this, but let's go on. It has a notch. <laughs> Shut up. A 6.1 inch OLED display with a pretty generous chin at the bottom, dual nano SIM IP67 water resistance, 128 gigabytes of storage, 6 gigs of RAM, the Kirin 970 processor, and a massive 4000 milliamp battery that can charge to 58% in 30 minutes. And it has not one, not two, but three main cameras. Oh my god! Oh my god! It has three cameras! I don't know about you guys, but three is better than two. Except when you're at an award ceremony. Then it 
it's not. The camera was made in collaboration with Leica and it has <clears throat> the biggest ever smartphone image sensor. ISO up to 104, 200,000, which is the highest ever on a phone and means that you barely need any light to take a photo. Laser focus, 4D predictive focus, color temperature sensor. It can shoot 960 frames per second at 720p. The top camera has 8 megapixel telephoto lens with f2.4 aperture. The middle camera has 40 megapixel with f1.8 aperture. 40? 40. Really? Yeah. The third camera has 20 megapixel monochrome sensor with f1.6 aperture. And the fourth camera, I know it's the front selfie camera, but it counts as the fourth and it's more dramatic like this. The fourth camera, which is the main reason for that disgusting notch, has 24 megapixel with 2.0 aperture. And do you remember a few episodes ago when DxO Mark said the S9 Plus has the best camera with a score of 99? Well, the P20 Pro has a score of a 109. What the f***? Which, if you didn't notice, it's the highest ever, ever. So suck it S9, suck it pixels, suck it apples, suck it all! But is this phone perfect? Mm, no. It doesn't have wireless charging, no storage extension. It has that ugly ass notch that you can hide with a black border. Oh. But the thing that hurts the most, no headphone jack. <laughs> It's gonna be available on April 6th at 900 euros, but not in the US because they think that Huawei phones being made in China will spy on US citizens. Okay. But how's that Facebook working for ya? Huh? With this phone, Huawei shows the underdog can do it, and it can do it pretty well. This was the show. Thanks again very much for watching. Remember to subscribe, leave a comment, share this with your friends. Next week, we're gonna have a little vacation. We'll have a bloopers episode. But I'm John, and until next time, keep it safe and secure. Cheers. And now let me teach you how to test your Samsung for dead zones. First, you type in the dialing app star hashtag zero star hashtag where you enter the test mode. Then you tap on touch and here you can draw lines and see which squares are getting green. It's very simple. You see squares getting green. It means they work. And when you finish, you can do a little nice drawing and done. You see, I do teach interesting stuff.